Hi guys, uh, thank you for joining. This is the Oracle Machine Learning uh, Office Hours, and today we have a very exciting presentation. This is the Oracle Machine Learning Usage Highlight. It's machine learning on sale GP data, predicting the best sailing direction. Um, so for today's session, uh, Jeron uh, Klosterman is going to join us. He's going to present um, this uh, exciting uh, demo and, and talk about all of the components uh, that take uh, into account when you're uh, trying to uh, speed up your uh, race boat, right? So this is Marco Sarencibia here, and we have Mark Kornick and Sherry as well on the call. Um, at any point during the presentation, if you guys need anything, please make sure to use the Q&A. So uh, topics for today, we just wanted to highlight that now um, Oracle Database 21C was made available on the 13th of August. So the Oracle Machine Learning for Python is available on premise uh, and it was launched with that uh, Database 21C. Um, so we have a blog out about it um, and then we have some new algorithms as well that come with the 21C on SQL, right? Which is the XGBoost and MSAT. Um, and then uh, we're gonna proceed with uh, Jeron as well. So so this is basically the, the slide. So right now it is available on Linux. Uh, and um, the idea is that you can take a look at the blog and then the blog has uh, uh, more details on, on all the uh, exciting things that we can do with Oracle Machine Learning for Python there. Uh, as we mentioned that before, this is available on 21C and is going to be backported to 19C on premises. So that is also going to um, uh, be part of the OML for Pi roadmap. And also, in addition to that, we are um, because the 21C has an Oracle Machine Learning for Python client, uh, that uh, download is going to be coming soon, and we're going to have that together with the uh, capabilities of being a client to the autonomous database as well, okay? Um, so that's it on our side. So uh, thank you very much, Jeron, for, uh, for joining us and uh, please take it away. Yeah, thanks um, a lot for the invitation, Marcos, uh, Mark and Sherry. Of course, it's my pleasure to tell you a little bit about SailGP. And I guess there's also a lot of people in the audience that don't know yet what SailGP is, but uh, don't worry because that should become clear in the next uh, few minutes. So um, my role is that I'm a product strategy director for small and medium business market in EMEA uh, for Oracle. I've been uh, working with Oracle technology for a pretty long time. Uh, I started uh, over 20 years ago when it was mostly uh, the database really, well, as it always has been, uh, and forms and reports, and there wasn't really so much else. And so I was very technically involved with that and uh, working for customers uh, and, and making that work for them, basically. And even though my role has changed a lot uh, since then, I'm still very technically involved and I enjoy that as well a lot. And one of my activities is actually to develop and to run trainings and to actually create these also from scratch, especially on the topics of analytics and machine learning. And then... Um, yeah, and then train customers on them uh, and also colleagues. So in fact, that's the reason also I'm here because we have developed a workshop together with the guys from SailGP. So the, the, the people that run this uh, new sport and these races uh, that showcase, uh, well, the analysis and the, and the machine learning capabilities of uh, the whole Oracle platform. And uh, the unique thing is that we have access to some real data from these races. So I think that offers a, well, a fantastic opportunity for anyone to learn uh, well our technology and also work with that real data. So I want to demonstrate that. Uh, so I'll show some, uh, some actual uh, OAC and also some machine learning. And uh, well, that's the, that's the goal of today. But first, a small video for you to get an idea of what SailGP is. Eight boats with the world's best sailors. A beautiful day and a fast racetrack. It is going to be on today. Nation versus nation. These super high-tech boats, iconic venues all around the world. It's frankly the most exciting thing I think that's happened in sailing for 
Pep Tiba. It's all about speed and tactics. No room for error on this stadium course. I think technology allows us to make smarter decisions. We have sensors on pretty much every part of the boat. The cool part about uploading it all to the Oracle Cloud is that anyone can access it from anywhere, anytime. Every team can see it, so there's things we can't hide. Having the access to the data really helps us fast track that learning. Any time that we're advancing the technology, we're really looking at data. I think we're all really excited. This is definitely the next generation of high-speed foiling catamarans. OK, so I hope that gave you a little bit of an idea. This is all about high-tech catamarans. These are the fastest boats on the planet. They go over 50 knots. So for you guys there in the US, that's over 60 miles per hour. It must be pretty exciting, I think, to be uh, on these boats. And what's so interesting is that they have hundreds or even thousands of sensors on them. And that's, of course, where we go in because uh, they produce all this data for us. You have sensors on wind speed, on the wind angle, or metrics on the sail, the angle of the rudders, anything you can imagine uh, coming from these eight boats that are racing. Uh, and the sensor on average give about a value five times per second. So it's five hertz. So you can imagine that's a huge amount of data, uh, literally gigabytes of data for each race. And data is central to everything in SailGP. So the design of the boats, the tuning, uh, all the decisions that the sailors make while they're on the water, they want to sail the best possible race. All of that is based on data. So a very data intensive sport uh, and, and very exciting stuff, I think. Now about the relationship between SailGP and Oracle, that's pretty close because uh, this was created two years ago, this sport by Larry Ellison, he's one of the founders and uh, Russell Kautz, uh, also a very famous name uh, if you're at all in the sailing world. And they want to create an exciting new sailing sport that brought sailing more to the masses, to a wider audience, because it can be a bit hard to watch on TV and they want that experience to be much, much more involved. Um, so yeah, Oracle and SailGP work very close together. Uh, a lot of the software, this very demanding software and analytics and machine learning all runs on uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And of course, uh, this partnership also means that we were able to get this, uh, well, this data from SailGP. So again, I think that's a unique opportunity for learning on real data. Okay, so uh, what kind of cases, uh, what kind of use cases do they have for this data at SailGP? And what products do they use? Well, you have to kind of distinguish between two cases. So first of all, there's everything that happens during the race. They use Oracle streaming analytics to calculate certain metrics in real time. And uh, for example, the umpires or the referees, they use those calculated real time metrics to decide when somebody needs to get a penalty. Or maybe somebody's gone outside of the borders of the racetrack, the invisible borders, or uh, maybe they haven't given priority to another boat when they should have done so. So all that comes from that, let's say, that real-time uh, analytics. They also use that for the, the mobile application that anyone can download, by the way. So that's, that's a big part of that vision of making, uh, making sailing more available and more involved for all of the fans. Well, and, and there's a lot more cases, but we, are not gonna, we don't do that in the workshop that we developed. Okay? What we do in that workshop is uh, what's called a post-race analytics. Because everything, uh, all this data that ends up in the autonomous data warehouse at the end of the race. So we have all these gigabytes of data there with all of those sensor values uh, during the race. And what is the big use case for SailGP with the data that is to improve the performance of the teams for the next race. So they want to have a very good look at the data and learn from it. Uh, if you're like, if you didn't win, you want to look at the winning team, like, hey, how did you do this differently, certain, certain parts of the race, so you can improve and you can imitate them or you can do, uh, you can do it better. So and for that, uh, we used Autonomous Data Warehouse, uh, the machine learning, the analytics with uh, OAC. 
Right. So very, uh, very quickly then, what is in this workshop? If you if you want to do that yourself uh, before we get to the machine learning part. So there are some things that are really important to analyze in this uh, sailing competition, and uh, one of them is the start of the race, because uh, if you get to the well, there's this whole procedure before the start, uh, before the race begins. But let's not get into that too much. But if you make a good start, you're uh, you're over the line exactly at the start signal, and you are at a very fast speed and in a good position relative to the wind. That already puts you in a very good position of actually winning the race. So it's no surprise that the the teams in SailGP they want to analyze exactly how they did during the start and to see how they could do better. So in the workshop, that's also something uh, the people can actually experience, right? How is it to be a data analyst for such a team and uh, see uh, see how they would analyze the start? So and you use uh, OAC for that. Then the second big thing is uh, the analysis of maneuvers. So what is a maneuver? Uh, well, you know a little bit maybe about sailing or maybe nothing, but when when a sailing boat changes its angle to the wind or it goes through the wind and uh, first uh, the, the wind is blowing against the left of the boat or the left of the sail, and then after the maneuver, it's on the right side of the boat, right? So they changed kind of the, the, the angle. We call that a maneuver, right? And the technique with which the teams do that the skill that they have in doing that, that is very, very important also. That makes the difference between winners and uh, not winners. So again, that's something that we want to analyze. And there's loads of uh, sensor or different sensor values that you can use to look at the quality of, well, how teams do these uh, maneuvers. So also in this workshop, there's that, right? So you can experience how a real data analyst would do that. And then, what I think we're all here for is the third component, which is where the machine learning comes in. And that is predicting the best sailing direction. Uh, now, what is that? Uh, as a sailor, when you want to go towards a certain destination, so you want to go to the next mark that you need, need to round, uh, you have to choose with which angle you're going to approach that mark, right? That's just how sailing works. And depending on that angle that you take, you will catch more wind or less wind, you will go faster or you will slower, and uh, you will have to do more distance or less distance, right? So that angle is really important. And at the moment, of course, that is all in the mind of the sailors, what is the best angle to take? But we want to kind of extract that from their brains. And we want to then help those sailors to say, hey, this would be now the optimal sailing angle. Okay, so that's what the case is all about. So let me explain a little bit more theory, and then I'm going to uh, basically demo that, how, how that works. So uh, again, imagine that uh, this is your destination. Okay, so this is where you want to go. And also for simplification, we're going to say that the wind blows exactly from that destination. So you're going to go exactly against the wind if you would take a straight line, only that you cannot do that with sailing, of course. Uh, maybe you've never sailed, but at least your intuition would say that you cannot go against the wind. You simply you know, phys physically can't do that. So you have to take an angle towards the wind. For example, this one here, right? This yellow line, this takes like a small angle to the wind. And that means you will build up some kind of speed yeah, towards your destination. But at some point, of course, you have to go back because this horizontal space here, you're, you know, you're moving away from the target. So you have to do one of these maneuvers. In this case, we call this a guide. And then you go back into the other uh, direction and you reach your destination. So here you actually build up some speed. Now, you could also take a wider angle. And that normally actually means that you get a bit more speed on your boat or a lot of more speed. Uh, it can even be that even though this route is, of course, much longer, uh, you will actually get to your destination faster, right? And then let's say there's a third, let's say there's a third even wider angle that's not drawn here, but uh, where the boat goes even faster, 
there you might actually reach a point that, uh, yeah, you go faster with the boat, but you reach your destination slower because uh, you just have so much more distance to, to uh, go over, right? So there, somewhere along the line is an optimum and the sailors, they know intuitively, uh, intuitively kind of where that is and where they need to guide, right? So again, we want to start to advise and do that for them, right? So uh, there's one other uh, very interesting thing about, uh, about this sailing uh, in SailGP is that these boats, they can foil. And foiling means basically that uh, a boat can come out of the water, just like you see here. And they can do that because they have a small wing or they have small wings uh, or yeah, foils <laughs> under the boat that can, yeah, they act like wings and they can push the boat out of the water. And once you foil the boat, you can go much faster because you have just much less resistance, right? This, this hull of the boat is not touching the water anymore. The interesting thing is, if first you need to build up enough speed to be able to foil at all. You need that minimum speed, which also depends again on some other factors what that minimum speed is. But once you reach that, you can go up and then you go even faster, right? So that's always something or, or a, a a critical point that the sailors try to reach, especially if you don't have so much wind, then uh, you often see that the sailors make a wider angle to the wind to build up more speed. So at least they reach that critical level where they can start filing and go even faster. Okay. So that's another factor that we have to keep in mind if we want to choose the optimal uh, sailing angle. Okay. So uh, what exactly do we want to do then? Uh, obviously, we want to reach our destination as fast as possible. And uh, to do that, we're going to try to choose the best possible angle, right? So what is the best possible angle? Well, that's the thing here indicated with blue, okay? So we could choose wind angle one, wind angle two, or anything in between or, or even beyond that. And we want to find out what the best value for that is. Now, the first step to be able to do that, and that's where machine learning comes in, is to predict what would be the boat speed if we choose a certain wind angle. And what is the boat speed? Well, that's basically this thing here in green, right? So this, you could say that's the length of this line. So wind angle one gives this speed and wind angle two gets this speed, okay? So that's uh, the first thing uh, you would want to do to calculate that or to predict that uh, in our case. And now I actually want to look at the audience because uh, wind angle is an important factor that determines what boat speed will we will reach. What do you think is the other important factor that determines the boat speed? Has anybody got an idea? Maybe you can put it in the chat. Oh, I see already some questions in there as well, which we can, I think, answer afterwards. Anybody an idea what other factor is important makes a boat uh, go faster or slower. The current, yeah, the current is, is also a factor, but especially, yes, the wind speed. Quinton, that's the, that's the right answer. So the wind speed is really important, of course. Generally speaking, uh, the, the, the harder the wind uh, blows, the faster the boats go, generally speaking, right? There's even some exceptions there, but yeah, those are the two big factors. Okay. So we're looking to find the boat speed as a result of wind angle and wind speed. That sounds pretty easy, right? But actually it isn't because every boat responds in its own way with a different resulting boat speed uh, to these two factors. Uh, there's no easy calculation that we can do, right? There's all these dynamics going on, different resistance for different boat types. Uh, and also the exact conditions under which a boat starts to foil that is slightly different per boat as well. So this is not easy to do. Uh, and again, all of this is in the mind of the sailor, but we try, we want to try to do this in a kind of automated way. So we're looking at machine learning uh, and this is the process we're going to follow for that. So imagine we've gone onto the water many times in the past and we've measured and recorded what the wind angle and the wind speed were at any moment in time, and also what the resulting boat speed was at that moment in time. Now, uh, with the data, a human being couldn't do so much. It, it would look a, a little bit chaotic, 
but uh, a machine learning algorithm could actually extract some patterns from that data, right? And the idea is that it finds the relationships between angle, speed, and uh, resulting boat speed. So if we imagine that we have that model, then we could go onto the water and uh, a sailor could see, hey, I've got a certain wind speed. That's kind of a given. And he could ask this uh, model to make a prediction and say, okay, what uh, boat speed would I get with this wind angle? And he would get a certain result, right? Or he could ask it for another wind angle or a whole range of wind angles and then make an educated choice of which angle he is going to approach uh, his target with, if that makes sense, yeah? Now, then there's still something uh, missing. So if you're into sailing, you know that is not quite the complete story yet, but that is a phase that comes uh, after the machine learning, and I will cover that as well. So uh, let's first talk about how we do the machine learning. So we're going to use a combination of OML, uh, of course, running in the autonomous data warehouse in this case, and OAC. And the reason for that is that we wanted to just something that was as easy as possible to operate for this workshop. But it also makes sense for, well, for customers or for, from a business point of view to choose technology that a lot of people can understand and that is fitting for a wide audience. So uh, we're using AutoML that is basically hiding all that complexity for us. And that means that we don't have to get into any of this, well, this difficult stuff of machine learning really. And we're using also OEC to make visualizations simple. And here it also made sense to use OEC because SailGP is already using that for other cases as well. So what are we going to do in the demo? We are going to do a bit of data exploration. So we're going to look at that historical, those, all those measurements that we've done on the water. Then we're going to build a model on that with OML, with AutoML. Then we're going to, when we have the model, make predictions with it, given a certain wind speed, given certain wind angles, etc. And then we're going to do some smart visualization, okay, where we're going to do a little bit more uh, complicated things. So uh, yeah, let's do that. And I'm going to just open Oracle Analytics here. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of data exploration. So this is on that data, on that historical data when we went out to the water and we did all these measurements. Okay, so let's have a look. We have these measurements of wind angle, wind speed, and the resulting boat speed. So first of all, let's have a look here at the relationship between wind angle and boat speed. So at the horizontal axis, wind angle, the vertical axis, the boat speed. And the first thing I noticed here was this, this kind of this grouping, all these measure points around the edge here. You see that? And you can also safely conclude here that the top of the boat seems to be at 50 knots, right? After that, I don't know, it's not possible to sail the boat faster or it just becomes dangerous, I guess. But there's like a top off. And also, if you see here the angle to the wind, so zero to 90, that's going upwind, right? So that's what we're talking about here. Generally, if you have a wider angle to the wind, the boat goes faster, right? I already showed that in the chart as well. Uh, so there is this relationship between these two, but then there's also quite a lot of measurements going on below here that we don't quite understand, uh, but that's of course, because we're only looking at wind angle at the moment. We're not looking at wind speed or anything else yet. So now let's look at the relationship between wind speed and boat speed. So vertical again, the boat speed, and now the wind speed is uh, on the horizontal axis. So the wind speed gets higher. And then at some point, again, I'm looking at all these measurements on the edge. Do you see that there's this bump here suddenly? see a sudden bump where the speed of the boat suddenly goes up. Does anybody have an idea what the reason for that bump could be? Why does this suddenly go up here? Yeah, fantastic guys. That's foiling or, or flying indeed. So this is apparently where the boat suddenly starts to foil. And apparently you can already do that from about seven 
knots of wind speed. But of course, I, I guess the boat is taking quite a wide angle towards uh, the wind. Uh, otherwise, that wouldn't be possible, right? So again, here we see, it, it seems there is a correlation, right? And it also that makes intuitive sense between a wind speed and the boat speed. Uh, but again, there's all these measurements we don't quite understand. So now let's combine the two. And uh, if we combine then the two here, so this is wind angle against boat speed, and then the color indicates the wind speed. Again, you kind of see that the lighter colors, the, the lower wind result in the lower boat speed, and then you go, go with a higher wind speed and that boat speed goes up. And also you see again that relationship between the wind angle and the boat speed. So both seem to have a correlation here with boat speed, uh, as we would expect, but as a human being, we find it really difficult to find the exact relationship, right? So, and that is of course where machine learning is going to help us. So let's jump into the machine learning. So here uh, I've uh, used AutoML to find the relationship between these uh, wind angle, uh, wind speed and the boat speed. So the F50, that's actually the name of the type of boat uh, that they have. And I've built a, a model for that. So let's look at the configuration of this AutoML. We're basically saying boat speed is our target. Wind angle and wind speed are going to be the, the input variables for that. Okay, if, and if I go back here in AutoML, you see that the resulting algorithm, well, I tried out different algorithms, right? I, I assume you've seen this a, a couple of times. But uh, the AutoML has determined that this appears to be the best model. So the Gaussian support vector machine, again, without me getting into the specifics of machine learning at all. So I'm going to select this model, okay? <laughs> okay, so uh, back in OIC, now of course we want to use that model and we want to make some predictions. So uh, we're going to go to the model, we're going to go here to machine learning, and this is something I did earlier, right? I registered that model in OEC so I can start to use it as a, as, as a simple end user without being a data scientist or anything. And uh, now we can start to make some predictions with the data flow component in OAC. So that's just a way to manipulate data or to apply uh, machine learning models. So let's have a look at uh, well, no, first I want to do one more thing, actually. I want to have a look at this to predict. Because what am I going to predict? I'm going to predict one particular value. No, I want to predict a whole range of wind angles and a whole range of different wind speeds. So for that, I've created a little table. And let me just show that to you. That looks like this. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so... So let's say that I want to predict all the angles, all the possible angles to the wind from one to 360 for the wind speed uh, of five knots, right? So I get a complete picture for a wind speed of five knots. You see that? So this, these are just combinations, right? Of wind speed and wind angle. And I don't know yet what the resulting uh, boat speed would be. Okay, so I've done that for wind speed of five. And now I do the same thing also for wind speed of 10. So these are just, let's say placeholders. These are the values I want to be predicting from. Okay, so now I've done that. I can go to my data flow, the prediction data flow. And this basically takes that table that I had. You see that same table here at the left bottom. And it applies the model for each of the records in that table. So it takes wind angle, wind speed for each of these, and it makes prediction. It already done that here, see that? So actually these, these don't make much sense for such a, this is way too close to the wind, okay? So you get practically no speed at all. Uh, but let's say we run this. So I've done that as well this morning, and we've run that. We've made all of predictions. Now we have our results. And our results have been stored in this one. Uh, but let's have a look at that and let's make some 
visualizations. So, so now I'm going to create a line diagram for this. There we go. And I just need to make some small changes here. There we go. Let's have a look at this. So what do we see? On the horizontal axis, we have all these possible angles we can take to the wind. On the vertical axis, we have our predicted boat speed. So this basically tells us if we now go onto the water, we could already predict if we take a certain angle, what the boat speed would be, right? We can see that here and you see slight variations in the, and, and of course the color is the wind speed, right? The color is the wind speed. So if I go with a wind speed of five knots, you can see what the top speed of the boat would be. Uh, and you can also see at what angle that would be, right? So that's, that's great. That's the machine learning component. But we're still missing something. So, so what we've now done, if you think about it, we've now used machine learning that, uh, and we trained the model and based on historical data, we can now predict what the value is of this green line, right? We know now the boat speed, we know the boat speed based on wind angle and wind speed. We can determine that with a prediction, okay? So that is great. And that's great that we could do this. But what we really want to know, uh, of course, because if we could take a very wide angle, we get the highest boat speed, but we don't get fast to our target. What we really want is this purple line, right? Because this purple line, that tells us how fast do we make progress towards our target, which was directly against the wind, remember? And uh, for the guys that ask themselves, okay, and, and how about this horizontal distance, does that matter? No, it doesn't really matter. We can practically ignore it because remember, we're going to guide about halfway and we will simply make up that horizontal space again. So that, that's not so interesting. The only thing we really want to know is the length of this purple line. So uh, if we then go back to our high school, uh, let's say our high school education, we know we can calculate these things with like cosine uh, and and well, I'm not sure how you say that in English. So some complicated mathematics. Do we need to do that now in OAC as well? And the answer is no, because we can do a nice visualization trick. And I'm going to show that to you. So if we now display this in a circular fashion, the same chart, now we're going to change this to a polar chart. That's a circular visualization. Okay. Now, what do we see here? Again, all these angles to the wind are now displayed in a circle. Isn't that nice, right? The, the resulting boat speed is the distance from the center, right? So these are like very, very high boat speeds here, for example. And the nice thing is because this is now circular, the vertical component, so let's say the distance from the horizontal base here, that shows us the speed towards our target. So that shows us basically the value of the purple line. I hope that makes sense to you. I, hope, I know I'm throwing a lot at you. And uh, now we have our end result because now we can read this. And for example, we can see if the, if the wind speed is 10, so the line in green, and we take uh, and we, we look for the highest point, the highest vertical point on this line, we see can, we can reach a boat speed about like 17 knots and then the optimum angle is let's say 43 44 degrees to take right so there we have our answer that's the perfect angle at this wind speed and if i go for example here to the, the higher wind speed of 25 knots you see that the highest vertical spot so the the maximum speed towards our target that's possible is uh, about 36 knots and uh, we should take a different angle. We, then we should take an angle of about 48 degrees. Okay, so we've done quite a lot of things here, right? So we've done machine learning to first calculate the, the boat speed. And then uh, we, we changed the, the visualization of that to actually extract 
the component from that, which shows how fast we're going towards our target. Um, so, so that's it. That's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, let me go quickly back to the, to the presentation. I wanted to say that if you want to try this out yourself, uh, you want to learn about machine learning or also about analytics and you want to play with this data, you can do this on this URL at your own time. So this is an on-demand workshop. Um, and we're also planning to run this again live uh, pretty soon. So then you can have some people helping you as well uh, live. And, uh, and that's it. So I hope that was interesting for you guys. I'm not sure if we have any questions, uh, Marcos. A mark. Yes, thank you very much, John. It was a, it was a very, very interesting and, and really appreciate it. So we have no um, a few comments um, and uh, we have one question in the Q&A. The first one is, uh, is MSET2 or anomaly detection service being used to evaluate the data? Um, that's, that's a very good one. I know that our, our Oracle teams uh, and our our product teams are working very closely with uh, SailGP as well. And I know they were looking also from an anomaly detection at SailGP data. The thing is, I've never spoken with them what they actually do. I, I think they're using it to detect like, hey, something is suddenly happening with the sensor value, something's going on, or this boat is about to crash, for example. Uh, and I, I think that would be a very nice case. Yeah, but that's all I know about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, there was yeah. another one we received uh, uh, via chat, actually, which was, yeah. um, are we transforming from ta their time series data? Uh, if we're transforming time series data, yes. Yeah, so wow. there's, oh, let me see how I interpret this. So it's it's really challenging, right? Working with the data that comes from from these boats because all these sensor values, very often you want to compare certain sensor values against each other. So for example, which angle am I to the wind and what is the wind speed, right? And you want to look at these together or do some kind of calculation together. But the, but the, but they actually don't necessarily come in from the sensor values at the exact same time. So there's all kind of data preparation going on to be able to kind of synchronize those. I'm not sure if that's an answer to the right. question, if that's the kind of time series right, right. the question was about. Yes, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then um, another one is how angle between the target and starting point matters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, OK, so the. the I, I guess the question is, we, we took a simplification here and we said that the, the, the target is always exactly upwind, right? So that's that we just said as a simplification, otherwise it becomes even more mind-bogglingly uh, complicated. Correct. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I believe you could basically just rotate the, the resulting chart that we created, the one with the, the radar chart, you could basically rotate that to, to get that result, right? So if your, mm -hmm. if, your, um, if your next target where you're going uh, is, is not exactly upwind, but I don't know, 13 degrees to the side, you, you could rotate uh, that, that chart accordingly and then read what would be your maximum uh, vertical value, right? So that would be the way to do it. In fact, the chart that we created in the end with machine learning, it's it's a very common chart actually in sailing, or they call it a polar chart or a, a naval polar chart, I believe is the official term. And they use it that way, right? So they, they can carry that on the boat and they can read off what would be the best angle to the wind uh, to take to read the target, or to reach the target, yeah. Excellent. All right, another one. Are they using exadata for sale GP? That's a good one. Um, I am not totally sure. <laughs> I'm not totally sure, actually. 
I don't know. Okay. No. I haven't heard about it, but that uh, that doesn't exclude it, I guess. Yeah. So I uh, you have to imagine I have I was involved with this creating the workshop from the data, but I wasn't I'm not actually in the in in the work for SailGB itself, right? In the actual uh the consulting work, let's say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then one comment would be, um, it would be interesting to compare these results with the results of physics-based models. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's an even uh, a lot more a complicated approach, I guess, to this. And that would also be a way to to maybe to reach this target. Yeah. So I, I agree there's, there's multiple ways to get to Rome, I guess. And also from that, if you have such a really complicated uh, simulator, you could probably create a result like this. Yeah, infinitely more complicated, but it would be possible. I know that it's, that's actually at SailGP, that's also how they're designing the boats. So they use, they use um, uh, physical simulation to design components and to com design the files, for example, so that is uh, an application they're already doing at SailGP. Okay, excellent. Um, would your presentation be available to show at a sailing club meeting? I think so. Yeah, I, sure. I think also this um, this case is actually completely generic, right? You could do this with any any let's say measure data from any boat, and you could create this kind of output. So. So I think that would work. Yeah, you don't need to own an F50 for this to work, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. No, that's perfect. So, so John, if you wanted to, uh, you know, to to ping me afterwards, I can I can uh, talk to John and get you the the slides, for example. Right. That's something. Yeah, sure. But we're anyway, we're gonna put the 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 links right um, in there. Okay. And. Um, I think that's uh, about it in terms okay, of questions. Good. Let's see, we got, yeah, we got just thanks. Okay, um, excellent. So thank you very much um, again, Jerome. It was an excellent presentation. You're welcome. I want to make sure that we get your um, link um, to the workshop and your slides in our um, Ask Tom page together with this recording. And thank you guys for joining and um, talk to you guys next week. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.